to decide. My body, my baby, my right to decide. My body, my baby, my right to decide. My body, my baby, my right to decide. We, we were talking about this a lot um, this week. Uh, we were hoping to get a couple of Year 12 girls here, but they're obviously studying, have to learn all this stuff to pass their tests, so they couldn't come today. But they wanted to say to the crowd that, I'm only 17, I'm, I'm doing Year 12, I'm not even thinking about those parts of my body, <laughs> and uh, not at all ready to make these decisions and not at all in, in that stage of life about birthing options. And it was actually my daughter and another girl that wanted to say, how can the government make decisions about her body that she's not even ready to make herself? Um, my 26 year old, um, who's engaged to be married, who lives in another state, she plans on having babies in 2012 and she's been around normal birth and natural birth and midwives her whole life. And she's also attended her siblings' birth, births. Um, so how is it that doctor's opinion or advice, however learned, will be able to override the long established legal rights of a woman to inform, consent and right of refusal? Um, how can our young women, our daughters or any woman trust our government to protect our right to decide what happens to our body and our babies? So. We can't let this die, we have to keep fighting. I know it's frustrating and it's always slung at us when we've got to take our kids to school or pick the kids up, but we've got to keep fighting. There's so many people, when I go to all these committee meetings and the maternal neonatal clinical networks that, uh, that I go as a consumer rep, there are good people that are powerful people that are doctors who aren't members of the AMA and aren't members of RANSCOG who do stand for what we stand for and who do speak on our behalf. I've heard it from their own mouth. I wish I could get it on Channel 7, um, but I've heard it from their own mouths um, by our cause. Um, so there's got to be a way, there has to be a way and I, I refuse to give up fighting and I hope you all keep fighting and we win this battle. And Margaret. Margaret's gonna have a word. Just a quick one. And if there's anyone else, just raise your hand so I can see who you are. Um, is that close enough? Um, yeah. Um, I'm Margaret and um, I really um, think it's fantastic that so many young babies and kids are out here. Um, I'm from Scotland and I was born in my grandma's bed. Um, home birth was natural for us. Um, we had all the women around. Um, all my auntie was the first to hold me. It was just, it's in my my whole psyche that I was born in my granny's bed. And um, I've had two home births. I'm a grandma now, and I see other grandmas here too. And I've had two home births and down at Kaipo, and I've had my family, my parents, my kids around. And it's just the most natural thing. And I, without midwives, um, they just give so much energy and spirit to be able to make birth a lot easier. Um, that's all I want to say and I just want to congratulate and empower um, all young women and my, my girls too to have home births. Thank you. Where is she gone? Hello wonderful home birthing women. I've got a birthing announcement to make. I am actually a granny midwife now. My son, my oldest son Jim, who's 24. And yep. Can you hear me? <laughs> And his partner, Claire, had a little baby boy with me as their midwife at home on Saturday morning. Yeah. Now, I've worked in hospitals and I really honestly can say I would be frightened to watch one of my grandchildren born in hospital. Unless there was an absolute emergency, it really frightens me. What's going on in our hospitals is horrific. And I think you all know that. The other thing as an independent midwife, Probably 70% of the women who birth with me at home have had caesareans before and they're birthing at home most of them because they had an absolutely traumatic experience in hospital and they've got incredible amounts of healing to do. So we really have to fight for our VBAC women and we really have to fight for our grandchildren and our children. Thank you so much for coming today. Thanks Julie. Cool. Now Wendy's going to have a quick word. Thank you. I'll just play the dudes. Anywhere.
Hello everyone, my name's Wendy, I'm a mother and I'm a midwife and I have, no, nearly 30 years ago I caught my first baby. The mum did all the work and I was blessed to catch this beautiful baby and it set me on a path of knowing that the knowledge all lies with us women and then I went on and I had my own five babies and I also became a midwife and I'm still a midwife and I'll always be the one who's learned so much about how our bodies work and what women do and that knowledge is always inside of me and I need to keep sharing and I need to be out there supporting and come 1st of July I still am going to be there with women. I have never broken the law that I know of in my life and I have no intention of doing it in the future but they cannot rob us of our fundamental rights and our rights to safety, our rights to birthright and to birth where we know is safe and our choice and so I have to continue doing. And I have in front of me the key principles of the maternity service in Australia. And every single one of them, I hold my head high as a professional, I, I do every single thing that is asked of me. Women are able to make informed and timely choices and feel in control of their birthing experience. The, uh, the care I provide is culturally appropriate and responsive to the manner according to the individual need of each woman. You can't get better than what you get offered when you have your own midwife and that continuity of care. And I do collaborate with all practitioners when the time is right, when the need is there. And it's always consensual and it's always woman focused, woman driven and baby driven. And I do stay with women and be beside them through the entire journey, before, afterwards, and it's lifelong. And it goes on and it goes on. And you know, I stand here before you, and in a society that they say one in four women is so traumatized by their birth that they have post-birth trauma syndrome, I know that these principles aren't adhered to in the system. And yet the discriminator and what is happening is that we are being judged and we do adhere to the principles. The system doesn't, it fails women. So yes, keep on fighting, we're not stopping. We can't stop because women are going to continue to have their babies where they feel safe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's in your pocket, in your pocket.